Kelly, are you presenting or just visiting? Um, I'm supposed to be presenting, but I'm trying to figure out how to um, host and I guess share. At the bottom of the page, there should be a little uh, box with the up arrow that says share, and then you can choose to share your slides. Okay. Kelly, how are you doing? Uh, if, uh, can you see what I'm presenting currently? I can see what you're presenting. You're going to need to make it larger somehow. Yes, that's what I'm looking to do. You've already got the poster up, so that's a good thing. I'm going to need to check in with Anissa here. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, great. Sweet. Yep, that looks looks good. Well, the writing is a little small, whatever, so you may need to <clears throat> I'd probably <clears throat> leave it like this for now, and then if folks ask you to if you have some way of zooming in yet, <clears throat> um, that would probably be good. So all right. But uh yeah, I'm gonna make sure Anisa's in okay shape. So I'm gonna let you go because it looks like you've got yep, you can zoom. Yep, plus and minus, I think they'll allow you to zoom in if folks have questions. So I'm going to go check in with Anissa then, okay? All right. All right, thanks. Let me know if you can read the post or not. Otherwise, I can zoom in. Just let me know.
uh, just let me know if you can read the post or not. Otherwise, I can zoom in to some parts. I didn't realize how small the text was going to be until I pulled it up. Hello. Uh, just let me know if you can read the poster or not. Otherwise, I can zoom in. I didn't realize how small the text was going to be. So if you can't read it, let me know and I can try to zoom in so you can read it better. Hello. Howdy, this is James just joining up. I've been bouncing around to make sure all these poster rooms are open and I wish I could read the writing. Man, it's small. I know. I know. Uh, let me see if I can. I've got, I've got a plus sign on the side of my screen so I can zoom in and scroll around. Oh, can you? Yeah, there's a little plus sign over on the right side. Okay. If I, if I, I know. move my mouse around, yeah. I see it. It's on the left side of my screen, but thanks for mentioning that. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know because I wasn't sure if people could read it or not. So thank you for that. So, um, having looked at this poster before, actually, I have a question, and that is, if I remember correctly, you said in this poster, maybe in both posters, that you're looking for you're looking for people to work with you on some of these projects. And I'm just curious, have you made any connections today? Maybe maybe you've made connections before today, that's cool, but have you actually made any new connections today that you know of? Uh, 
Not that I know, at least nobody has told me from like this poster. We haven't had any uh, contact since uh, you've seen the poster either. So I don't know what it's like over at the other poster currently. Uh, Anissa might be uh, talking to some people, but right now in my room so far, nobody has uh, talked to me about that. Well, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I was I was in the other room and they're talking. So, I mean, I can help answer that question because um, I was just over in the other room. Um, but Jillian also sparked an interest in talking about partnerships. And right before I came over here, her and Anissa were talking about um, what the future holds and how we're going to stick to our plans and how we will continue to make plans as we get partners and stuff like that. Good to hear. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jillian. On the other hand, can, can you tell me the status at St. Kate's? Because COVID aside, there have been some issues at St. Kate's with getting helium, with getting permission to drive vans. I'm just wondering, is are some of those things actually getting ironed out? Um, as for the van issue, I know Eric was looking into that. Uh, it, the whole COVID thing kind of put a, a pause on that originally as it was. I think he's finally starting to get some information. However, what that information is, I cannot say. Uh, Julian, I don't know if you uh, heard from him as well for it, but I don't remember uh, him talking to us about it. Um, yeah, so the vans are on a pause right now. I'm also a student athlete and we use the vans to get to different places. And so they're keeping very limited on van usage right now. And I don't think anyone's allowed to use the vans actually. Um, and then for your question about the helium, uh, this past summer we have looked into other places where we can purchase helium. And with our Eclipse projects, we have looked into um, areas near where we are planning to go for those Eclipse and where we could possibly buy helium. I know Anissa looked more into that, so she'll, she might have more detail on it, but yeah. Okay, just wondering, um, Eric and I have worked together for a long time, um, and Gordon, who's on the call as well, um, and shared resources and shared things like helium sometimes, but I'm just wondering what is the status at St. Kate's, and it sounds like some of it is progressing and some of it is still up in the air. Do you mean for, um... for, getting, for getting helium, for instance? Go ahead, Gordon. Was that a pun, saying things are up in the air? Uh, that was an unintentional pun. Um, I have a question for the team, actually, about the the poster, and that is, have you put together any of these SIPMs yet or not? Uh, like into a box, do you mean? Have you physically built them and tested them? We have not tested them, unfortunately. We uh, haven't really had the chance to, like, come back to campus to really work all together. Um, as for the SIPMs part, they already, um, like, they already kind of come built. We just have to figure out a way to uh, attach them into our box and how to be able to get information from them. We still have to figure that part out, unfortunately. So that was okay. part okay. of the testing. Well, that's fine. I just recently bought parts for what's called a Cosmic Watch, which is a SIPM detector. And it's got 500 parts or so. It's it's a really complicated thing to build. You don't wow. buy it. So it sounds like what you're planning to use is something different than what I had in mind. That's that's good because that will get you going faster, maybe. Yeah, ours are really small from the sounds or from the pictures we've received too. So that's kind of nice. Uh, James yeah. or Kelly, what's the active area for these uh, silicon detectors? Um, hey Kelly, I just joined, so I caught Gordon's question. Sorry to interrupt, whatever, but I'll. Okay. I'll if do you want me to free off the hook, or do you got that one? I feel, I feel like I'm trying to racket my brain for it. I think you might have that one sound better than me right now. I do. I think it's a millimeter by a millimeter is the uh, the active area of the SIPM. It's pretty small, but it's uh, if I remember right, that's the uh, the area. So, what sort of count rate do you expect? Compared to uh, Geiger Mueller. 
I should know that you would ask that question. Uh, that's be a question for for uh, Hannah. Uh, in that instance, this is really her her wheelhouse is SIPMs and using SIPMs for Snow Lab and and Dune because um, she's utilized them in her research for those facilities. So uh, mm -hmm. I should have that at my disposal, but that notebook's at school right now. So that's not I'm not a good student today. Is Hannah on this call? I don't believe so. I told her to try to join, but uh, I w we do have two students, of course, at the same time. So, uh, so I don't know if she's on the Anisa call or if she's on one of the other ones. Um, but okay. I don't see her here. That's fine. I'd be in, I'd be curious to learn about the product that you are using if it is a commercial product. It is commercial, so we bought. That's partly some of the delay too. We never got these in house. Uh, they're from Hamamatsu, uh, and because of COVID, there was a shutdown. So Dr. Kini bought these back in uh, April as part of her startup funds. We never actually got them in house until I think the middle of July. So they are a commercial product um, produced by Hamamatsu, who is one of the big sipum producers. So. Um, they're, they're legit, they're not cheap. Um, this is a payload that we would not want to try to lose, well, never do, but um, these are definitely not cheap, but um, they are pretty much, we gotta figure out how to power them up and then get the data um, off of them. So that's gonna be uh, the challenge. James, what's the active area for your detector? Um, I don't know, because we haven't built them yet. It's a, it may be a, it may be a different sort of thing. It's a, it's a crystalline detector. I think the crystal is maybe two centimeters by six centimeters by six centimeters or something like that. It's a crystalline chunk. Um, and then I think the SIPM, if this makes sense, picks up the light from the crystal. I'm not, so, so I guess I don't know the active area of the SIPM itself. I bought it, but I literally left it in the box and told the students to build it and they haven't done so yet. <laughs> Okay. So we don't have them running either, but it's called Cosmic Watch. Um, it's a MIT product, a muon muon detector. So that also might be somewhat different than uh, what Eric is working with. Um, I need to actually jump. I'm going to jump off and go around to the other uh, posters. But um, thank you for showing this poster, and I look forward to talking to all of you more about this later. Yeah. Uh, thank you for asking questions. Kelly, any other questions for me since I'm on, since I just hopped off of Anissa's call here quick? Or? Uh, I guess just how's Anissa doing? <laughs> she's she's doing well. She's doing well. So um, uh, she said some questions about, you know, flights and stuff like that. And she said, as as we, I, she had to mention, right, we're, we've, we're very theoretical physicists right now. So um, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, yes. But how are the neutron detectors doing? Uh, those have gone crystalline, so um, it's very obvious that they have expired. Um, the ice, I'm assuming now the ones that you had purchased and then we utilized, yeah, those have gone crystalline. Um, and I have not bought any more just because I want to have stuff ready to go and know that I've got blessing from my uh, institution for vans before I start buying stuff again. So, um, as soon as I get the, the okay to go, I will uh. I will buy some more, but yeah, the other ones have gone crystalline. It's very, it's very interesting. And there's a interesting chemistry experiment that takes place with them um, over time. And, and, and Alicia did talk about that when we, uh, um, when we were uh, talking about that, so. Okay. And if you're looking for a partner who's sort of un unattached at this point, I, uh, I'm interested in the charge particle counts. That's good to know, thank you. Thank you, Gordon. I wasn't going to assume anything, so I appreciate uh, this is an open invitation for everybody. So we would definitely um, anybody else in the call too. We are looking for partners. This is a, a, a exciting. Uh, if Gordon, if you go over to Anissa's poster, she's got kind of details about what, how we're planning on uh, looking yeah, at I, sort of the future. But I looked at hers for a few minutes. Yes. Okay. Um, so I have some other ideas too, and I'll talk about. I'll talk with you about those some other time. All right, sounds good, thank you. Okay.
I'm good work, Kelly. Off, Kelly, because I think you're doing a good job. Yeah. Good luck. Good work. Thanks to both of you. <laughs> Do you want me to wait here for a bit, or should I hop back over to Anissa? Um, I mean, you can do what you want. I'm trying to... Oh, now there's no one. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Well, oh, wait, hold on. Can I switch with you? Yeah, okay. I don't know how to do this, but... Okay. We can figure, how, do I, how do I present? Or do hold you on, just leave you. and then I present? So, I stopped sharing. There's a share button down. Okay, open system game. preferences. Hold on. I need to. Oh, shoot. It might quit my thing. Uh oh. Okay, hold on. You stay here. I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm back. All right. Um. Yeah, I just had to like change the setting. Thing. Okay, hold on. Okay. Share. Do I? What do I share? Microsoft PowerPoint. Yeah, you share the Where's PowerPoint. Okay. Oh no, I have two open. Well, we'll see which one you pick then. This, this one. <laughs> so you just see this. Yeah, you just see that, and then you put it um put it in start. present mode. This. Yeah. So I just wait here. Yeah, and then uh. I don't How do know. I see when people come in? How is that? You. It should come up. Oh, really? Or, well, I wonder if I leave, maybe you'll be uh, put it as new host then. Probably. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if that happens because otherwise. Is that... Okay. Let's see. So you're gonna leave and come back then? Can I assign privileges? Can you see my uh, taskbar at the bottom? Uh. Like, can you see my mouse right now? Yeah, I can like, see over... your mouse. But is it hovering over like messages, photos, like whatever? Can you see any of that? No. Okay. Just. No, it looks like, like oh, do I need to close my other things? No, it looks like it was just going over uh, like the purple line at the bottom. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to leave and I'm going to hope to God okay. it switches you as host then. So. Okay, hopefully. Uh, text me if it does. I don't know. I don't know how to tell if it does or not. Uh, it'll come up. It'll say. Okay. As I'm presenting? Yeah, as you're presenting. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh,
Hello. <laughs> Hello. Okay, so there was no one in here. <laughs> I was like, is no one here? Or am I just not seeing anyone? Um, Carl from <laughs> Montana was in the other one, and he was uh -huh. asking all the questions. And I was like, oh my god. And he's like, his mentor is Jennifer Fowler. Are you serious? And he was like, there can be a discussion about collaboration. And I was like, oh, <gasps> oh my God. Yes. I was like, we could get to meet her. Like, that's crazy. Should I put my camera on? I feel like that was yeah. it. Okay. I, well, I told Callie to put hers on. Okay. I think I can just hit this. Or is this me? Oh, there I am. <gasps> yep. This is the nicest shirt I could find for today, besides like sweatshirts and everything else. Yeah. It's still like an athletic shirt. So. I can't tell though. Yeah, it just it looks, looks like, like a sweater. White. Oh, really? Mm hmm. I thought it just looked like a white, you know, shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm close. I don't care. I don't know if I'm like, do I need to be closer? I'm like, hello? <laughs> Hi, Hi Eric. Eric. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, I've been circulating around three different pollsters, so. Um, so if you have not had a chance to check out the other ones, I would definitely do that at this point because we've only got about ten minutes or so, I think, before we shut down oh, here. So, oh. but. Okay. okay. Yes, so I would definitely, if you have not, this is one of the things when, you know, best case, whatever, we always say, you know, going to rotate after 20, but 20, I mean, usually how these things go is that you're already sitting here and it's already, right, it's already been a half hour and where did that half hour go? So, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you haven't had a chance to whatever, I would suggest doing that now, so. Um, All right. but, uh, okay. Okay. Julie and I'm gonna go look at other ones. Okay, sounds good. Okay. So, Julian, have you been on on tap yet for for uh, questions, or is this your first? Uh... This is my first time like presenting, but I have like helped answer other questions. Questions, okay. Yeah, Great. So... I think right before you came in, Callie and I were talking to James about a question he had. Okay. Great. So. Mm -hmm. All right, I will let uh, the other folks on the call take questions, but I just check it in here quick. So you've got it. You got it. so and again, let me know if you get any questions too later on. So mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, so you have a, a lot of text here. So uh, yeah. maybe could you just uh, go over what's what's going on with the the payload? I guess the project. Uh, yeah, so basically this poster just talks about what kind of materials we're planning on using these next couple of years um, in preparation for the eclipse eclipses that are coming um, in 2023 and 2024. Um, so we talk about how we're planning on continuing our use with the Gagu Mueller tubes and then um, we're also expanding into the use of SIPMs, which are silicon photomultipliers. Um, we haven't had any use of them yet, just because they came in, I think, last month, and we haven't really been allowed to be back on campus as much as we would have liked to, and we haven't been able to do any like payload building or like any flights at all. So once we can kind of start doing that again, we will start experimenting with the SIPMs and taking different measurements from those. Uh, they're a lot lighter than the GM tubes, so that's a plus. Um, yeah, and then we're continuing looking into temperature and pressure. Uh, and yeah, so this poster is just kind of like a brief rundown of what we want to use in the years to come and how we're going to like measure them. Yeah. Our whole team is new to ballooning, so this is kind of like was a good start for us just to get to know the material and like what 
the expectations are in the years to come and like what we would use to plan flights and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. How uh, heavy is this sort of uh, like sensor equipment? Um, I know Geiger tubes are sometimes uh, slightly larger than the typical like high altitude balloon sensor. So I was wondering that. Was the question how have you used them? Is that uh, like how about how heavy and like how oh. how big a challenge is it with I guess the the weight and the volumetric uh, scale of like these sensors? Yeah. So just because um, I haven't been able to have a big chance of interacting with the payloads, because over January when we were supposed to start the internship, I was away on a training trip with the swim team, so. I didn't get as much of a chance to like actually go through and like fully interact and weigh things um, like the rest of the team has. But I think the SIPUMs are like 30 grams in weight. So they're pretty significantly lighter than the GM tubes. I hope that answers your question. I don't know. Oh yeah, no, that's fine. I okay. I understand COVID and all of that, so yeah. that, that makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. And then, what do the the SIPMs actually measure? Are they fully replacing the GM tubes, or are you just doing a comparison study to to see if they yield similar similar output results, or is it some completely other uh, data that you're collecting? Yeah, so we're still just trying to like compare the two and um, see how they work and if they'll be suitable for what we're looking for in the future. Um, I know one of the other professors we work with, um, Hannah Rogers, she has more experience with the SIPOMs. Um, so uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Anissa, you want to help answer this question? Hello. <laughs> um, so basically, he asked if we were going to replace the GM tubes with the SIPOMs or if we're planning on using both and if there's like a huge difference between what they measure. Uh, really it's just charged versus uncharged particles. Mm-hmm. I think that we may, we were looking into doing both, flying both at the same time because the SIPOMs are just like, the 2020 version compared to like the 1990 version of the Geiger Mueller tube. So they can, um, at least we assume that they can detect more than what the Geiger can do now. And they weigh significantly less. So we could fly five of them if we wanted to and still not even weigh the same as one Geiger Mueller tube. Mm hmm. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. All right. I'm going to hop over to another call. Sounds good. Do either of you know um, what what is the base model being used for the Astra flight planner? I don't think so. <laughs> um, Anissa, do you know? Well, I'm going to zoom in. It might say it. Oh, what the, wait, what the base we used? Or the, um. You mean, like, what we need to set in for our, like, to get that reading? Um, yeah, like the, the meteorological base model associated with that kind of a, a flight path. Like um, we we use a uh, Allen Jordan, or we've also used Hub Hub, and it's just they're I think they're two different ways to do the same thing, and they both use a global forecast system as input. And I was just curious if this one did the same. Um, I would assume so. Yeah, I just know this is the one we. Well, this is the one we were told to use because that's what the past teams have done, and they say it's pretty accurate for flights and whatnot. Has that been your your team's experience as well, that it's, it's served 
your needs in terms of accuracy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. I'm just looking at their website now to see if I can find what they use. Mm Do you have any idea like what the accuracy is, um, like maybe a radius or anything of a proposed and actual landing site? Mm, I'm not 100% sure on like what like the accuracy would be and like the radius in which it could be found. Um, but from what we've heard from like the past teams, it follows the path pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, we we fly radio songs and so we never have to worry about doing a recovery. And so I've done one larger balloon payload where we did chase it down, but uh it just seems to me that having a quite accurate prediction or else being able to track it and track with it during the whole flight is pretty important when you're doing a recovery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know our past like, members have used this and they've pretty much always returned with the payload. Yeah, losing the payload is a big deal, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Usually they just end up in like corn fields or something, so. Yeah, the one. Not too much. The one that I was on did land in a field, but it came awful close to the Missouri River, and then it would have been, yeah, would have been gone, gone. Yeah, we always like. I'm pretty sure like the little blue marks on the astro planner are like wicks, so we always try to avoid heavily like water areas. I don't know. <laughs> right, that makes sense. Well, well thanks again. Please. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Yeah. What 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 did you say, Anisa? Any trees? Um, yeah, we avoid like trees, like forested areas. We want like open plains, basically. Sure, for a landing site. Mm -hmm. For easy recovery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes here in Montana, again with the smaller balloons, you know, we've toyed around the idea of trying to recover them because you could mm -hmm. reuse them, you know, like potentially. But uh, yeah, in like heavily mountainous and forested terrain, it's uh, it's usually not worth the time trying to <laughs> go pull it out of a tree. Mm -hmm. Exactly like you say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't the 2021 eclipse that we're possibly looking at supposed to be like up north? That's where we would be flying from? Um, It's too close to Canada. So mm -hmm. it'd be an international flight. And that's like Mm -hmm. A big no no, which is what Eric said. So, okay, we what, might what's, do one here. Why does Eric discourage international flights? Um, I think it's just their rules and stuff for being in there. I don't personally know them, but he was like, yeah. it's just best to avoid that. And if there's a lot of forest in the Great Lakes up there, yeah, so sure, yeah. That makes sense. All right. Well, thanks again. And uh, enjoy the rest of the conference and presentations, both of you. Thank you. You too. Thanks. I'm going to go back to Callie's. OK, sounds good. I'll just okay. chill here. <laughs> OK. I think there's only like a minute.
already. Let's, uh, nope, how do I? Nope, not that one. Mm, that's the one. 